what happens to your digital footprint when you die. All these bits and pieces of information spread out around the world on different sites, what really happens to it? Now, I would imagine before I got to thinking of this, that there should be like a, a smooth, seamless, like easy solution for the relatives of the deceased to kind of control your, the footprint. Make it go away or make it, uh, make it the uh, everlasting good impression of who's ever, who was ever dead. Or, or maybe uh, uh, the right impression for those who can't have a good one, but some kind of okay impression or, or, or something. A good or nice and uh, an optimal solution. But really it's not that easy at all. Today's process, okay, uh, sorry about that. Today's process is not easy at all. Just look at it. I know this word so I can read them out to you. If someone who's dear to you and you're the relative dies, if you're gonna clean up online uh, after them, you have to first find the accounts. So you have to go by their email address or uh, maybe their usernames, if you know that, and their second and third email address, and then you have to search all these different uh, websites to check if, uh, if that user is registered right here. And you have to do this over and over again for all the different services just to figure it out. And then you got to establish the link between the deceased person and that very account. Because, you have to make clear that there's a connection between the deceased person and that very account. Because, how is Hotmail going to know that sexybunny at hotmail.com is really your father. <laughs> so you have to explain that to them and, and you have to prove it. And then you have to prove that there's a link between the deceased person and you. Who are you really? You have to tell them and make very certain that they understand that you are Luke Skywalker, the son, <laughs> right? And all these kinds of things that's a, a pretty tedious process, and it's, uh, it's not easy, it's not seamless at all. It's a, a process of bureaucracy, of emails, faxes, phone calls, and not at all easy. Wouldn't it be nice if the process was easy and you could control the digital footprint of someone who's deceased? Well, actually, this is, I guess you now understand or can grasp the problem, right? But the problem is actually growing every day. So just check out here what's happening in one internet minute. This is today. There's over 100,000 new tweets in one minute. And there's 30 hours of video upload in one minute. That's a lot. And these numbers are increasing because every single day there's more people getting access to the internet. Every single day there are new services put online. A couple of years back, we maybe have Facebook, uh, but today we have all these different services and the list just goes on and keeps growing. And what kind of content are we putting into these websites and these services? A couple of years back, I don't know if you remember, but consumer-based impact on the web was mostly based on a web page, some text, maybe some photos. But today, we're snapping away food up photos and uploading on a daily basis and Twittering maybe three times a day. So number of people online increases, what kind of services they have access to increases, and what kind of content they put out there are also in increasing. So the problem is, is just growing bigger and bigger every day. We could say that we have moved our lives online. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Picasa, all those names, it's easy to remember, but what about gambling sites? I guess between us in this room, we have some amount of gambling money put in some kind of account somewhere. And PayPal, and prepaid uh, goods and services. For instance, um, say you paid for a three week semester in Aruba with your girlfriend in August <laughs> on Groupon, right? What happens to that when you die? 
And of course, there's love. But we're not going to get into that right now. But we have moved our entire lives online. It's easy to see, and it's becoming more evident. But the very thing connecting me, the person, to this life online is uh, some accounts and some passwords. Shit, I even got the same password for all these accounts. <laughs> and that's pretty easy. So you can see the link between me and this is fragile. But now we understand the context and we understand the problem, but actually, uh, how can we fix it? What kind of seamless solution is possible? We looked at how we can group these different problems. And if you can read the text on the bottom there, it says identity theft, because that could be a problem. When you have your resume on LinkedIn, you have all your, uh, your life on Facebook, you have your thoughts on, uh, in your blog, when you're dead, that's not much left protecting your identity. So it's pretty easy to steal it and try to be you for a day or for some other cause. And of course, there's uh, monetary aspects, as we spoke about uh, on PayPal, for instance, or things actually worth money. Those assets should, I think, uh, dependent on what kind of country you're in, fall upon the hands of those who inherit you when, you, uh, when you're deceased. But the emotional aspects or the emotional assets you put online, that's maybe the hardest part and maybe the most complex and difficult problem. Because with this, you could do a lot of stuff. Today, the solution is maybe to freeze the account. That means what it, what, whatsoever, what's out there are visible or invisible to whomever has access to it forever. And some services offer to, uh, to maybe delete everything some services offer the relatives to download all the content so they can do whatever they please with it. And some services actually offers their relatives to take over the account. Um, <laughs> for me, that would mean my mom getting the full access to all my emails and all my Facebook and LinkedIn and all my accounts. And not, I'm not really sure I want that. So we should maybe think a little bit about what kind of optimal seamless solution do we want? And I don't think the solution is to delete everything. Because today, I'm not sure that if you Google my name, I'm not sure that my future employee or employer would like to see a photo of me with baggy pants, long hair, skating boots, a guy like this. I'm really not sure he wants to see that. I, I do not want him to see it. I want him to see this guy. Like the ice cold business guy with the nice suit and a tie on. So right now, I maybe want to take this left photo out. But when I'm dead, when I'm gone, I want my grandchildren and their children to be able to see both the naive young student and the businessman, and for them to make up their mind who they like and, and don't. So I don't think uh, delete everything is the solution. But there is some solution. My name is Robert Bigwist. I work uh, with the Legada. I'm uh, the chairman of the board of this company with uh, this award-winning team. We're working on some solutions to try and fix this problem. We're very open to talk with any of you who has thoughts about this. We're a software company and we're trying to make this better. Thank you very much.